The talent and voice behind Mercury Prize winning Anthony and the Johnsons is on her first world tour under her new name, Anoni. She was the first transgender artist to be nominated for an Oscar, but boycotted the ceremony after she wasn't invited to perform. Her latest album, Hopelessness, tackles the tragedies of our age, like drone warfare, loss of liberty. I went to meet her. Blow me from the mountains. I do feel a sense of despair when I look out on things and often I have felt quite hopeless which is why I wanted to address the, the, the subject of hopelessness and, uh, and of the feeling of hopelessness and, and, and it's been important for me to realise that hopelessness is a feeling, it's not a fact and it actually has very little bearing on what's to come, it's just, it's just my own personal state, you know. As a singer, as someone whose currency is emotion and intuition, I've always felt that to move through a feeling, no matter how intimidating it is, 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 is the most productive way of, of clearing yourself and preparing yourself to make good decisions. Now, a lot of people here are pretty worried about the fallout from Brexit. Um, a lot of people also are pretty hopeful about what's going to happen, given that the country was split down the middle in the vote. Um, you described Brexit in a, a post as a, a prison riot. Tell me a little bit more about what you meant by that. The sense that people were expressing in voting to leave a kind of tremendous sense of disempowered frustration and that this was a way of kind of pushing over the tower. Um, and it wasn't a particularly constructive gesture, but it was a destructive gesture in hopes that something better might take its place. It all adds up in terms of education, access to honest media, and job prospects, job security, you know, effective health care, you know, all of those things, I mean, have been systematically whittled away over the last 30 years and what you're left with is like a, a cage of people that, that, that feel that they have no prospects and, 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 and they're looking for, for someone to blame. This is your first album as an Oni. Um, you've been known as an Oni personally for quite a while, haven't you? So why did it take so long to sort of go public as a Noni? You know, I just followed my nose with it. You know, it was just, I think I guess I reached a point of critical mass where, where I would just was becoming really uncomfortable with people using male pronouns to address me. And I mean, it's not to say that I want people to like pretend that I'm a biological woman, because obviously that's not my story. But my story is that of a transgender person that within a binary model prefers to be referred to in the feminine. As President Obama nears the end of his term, do you think he's really stood up for LGBT rights, for example, in the current debate over bathroom policy? Has that, have you been impressed with that? I think that's the perfect example of throwing up a smokescreen. Because even within the Democrats now, like, you know, they use this sort of aura of social liberalism um, to get elected, but still they have all sorts of dirty dealings. Uh, with lobbyists and, and corporations and, and you still have to wonder who they're really representing, you know. So they, they, they have different ways of manipulating us to think they're on our side and Obama is certainly like very charismatic and, and, um, and I think in his own way quite heartfelt. But I, I feel dis bitterly disappointed with his tenure and things have only gotten worse in the eight years that he's been president. And, and um, a conversation about bathrooms isn't going to rectify that for me. And do you now, looking ahead, think, well, we might be on the cusp of the first female American president, there's another female prime minister here. Does that fill you with hope for the future? It's not about one politician for me. It's like, you know, I remember reading this study once where it said that, like, if 30% if of the people at a boardroom table are women, the culture changes. Do you know what I mean? And my question then is, what happens when it's 70% of the women at the t uh, of the decision makers at the table are women? How does the culture change then? You know, we're all we're all used to this kind of 30% uh, equation where men are still running the boat, or that we humour them in thinking that they're running the boat. And in many insidious ways, we support their narratives by not asserting our voices and not asserting our our seat of power you know, as feminine people, 
But, but so what what's happens? your answer to that? What happens when it is sent? What do you think happens? I mean, you know, well, Brexit well, was a prison a really riot. What question, happens? Isn't it? Because we've never seen it. What does it look like? Let's try it out. Well, I mean, for me, what have we got to lose? It's not like we're not against the wall. You know, are we really, do we really think that the same systems of power that have gotten us t to this unprecedented crisis are capable of extracting us from it? One final question. If Brexit was a prison riot, what is a Donald Trump presidency? I mean, I think it has the potential, honestly, to be like a final presidency of the United States. I mean, I think he could potentially start a nuclear war. Anoni, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.